Kuzambo and welcome to this week's edition of Bhutan This Week. I'm Juni Zuxelzen. These are our top stories from the week. His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gilton graces the 12th Daesung Raising Day. Thousand butter lamps offered in memory of the lives lost following the deadly earthquake in Turkey and Syria. And ECB to evaluate the manifestos of political parties and candidates. Over 8,000 desops from across the country gathered at the Jan Limithan Stadium to celebrate the 12th Desung Raising Day on Tuesday. The Desung was established by Royal Charter in 2011 as a platform for trained volunteers to offer their services to the nation. Since then, nearly 35,000 volunteers have been trained as desops in 54 successive training programs. The ongoing 55th training program will raise the total number of desops to more than 36,000. The 12 dozen raising day celebrations held at Jungle Methang included drill performance, entertainment, and an exhibition of the many projects initiated by the Desun. The chief guest, Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Ring, outlined the most significant of Desung and Desup services to the nation. Thanking Desups on behalf of the people of Bhutan, the Prime Minister said that Desung is a splendid demonstration of the profound spirit of commitment and loyalty of the Bhutanese people for the nation and expressed confidence that with His Majesty's guidance and leadership and the dedication of the public, people can look forward to the future with optimism. The Prime Minister is an honorary Dasup who has worked alongside Dasups on several occasions, including during Bhutan's special medical deployment to Nepal following the devastating earthquakes in 2015. Dasups have volunteered during all national disasters and large national events since its inception, lending a helping hand whenever needed. Since 2020, the Desung began the accelerated training program to allow for greater numbers of volunteers to become Desups during the COVID-19 pandemic. Tens of thousands of Desups volunteering across the country and along the entirety of the country's borders were critical to Bhutan's successful response to the pandemic. In accordance with His Majesty's command that opportunities be created during this period for Bhutanese youth to be part of projects of national importance and generational impact, Desung initiated a series of projects under the Desung National Service. Alongside the National Service projects, the Desung initiated the Desung Skilling Program, which has carried out over 300 programs to train Desups in a variety of wide-ranging skills from construction and woodworking to fitness training, culinary arts and tailoring, among others. The Desung has grown from a volunteer corps trained to help during disasters to an invaluable resource for nation-building. The 12th Raising Day was an apt celebration of all that the Desung has achieved. The celebrations were made all the more special when the Majesties the King and Gelsen graced the event and met with the Desups gathered from across the country. The Desups expressed their pride and joy for being able to serve the nation. They also shared they are delighted to see the Majesties today. The Desung is His Majesty's program and I've always wanted to become a Desup. But because of my old age, I thought I would never get this opportunity. Then I heard about the Desup program for former monks, so I registered and became one. I'm very happy today to be a part of the celebration. It is an opportunity for us to reflect on our successful journey and also meet our friends and most importantly I feel so blessed to meet their majesties today. I'm feeling proud as all of us are gathered here today. We get to meet our mates and exchange our experiences as well.
Kiletim for BBS News. Her Majesty the Gelsen graced a prayer ceremony to light a thousand butter lamps last Thursday for those affected by the earthquakes that struck Turkey and Syria. More than 21,000 people have lost their lives and millions have been displaced and affected by the disaster. The Prime Minister, senior government officials, foreign diplomats and representatives from international organizations also participated in the ceremony held at the Grand Kundre of the Tashi Chedzong. <laughs> The government is exploring ways to increase the undergraduate intake for teaching and nursing courses and increasing government scholarships in private colleges. The Prime Minister said this when he dropped by to interact with journalists in Ponaka over the past weekend. The Prime Minister said the change is crucial as the previous courses did not match the job market opportunities. The Prime Minister also acknowledged that the immediate change in courses has affected the two batches of art students and that it is therefore the responsibility of the government to help them. The government is now trying to increase the enrollment in other fields like nursing and teaching. Earlier, students with arts background had the option to apply to five colleges under the Royal University of Bhutan. However, this year, only three colleges will accept arts students. Sharapsi College has removed seven arts and humanities courses. Sharapsi College is now offering new programs in Bachelor of Economics and Political Science, Bachelor of Digital Communications and Project Management, and Bachelor of Data Science and Data Analytics. Similarly, the College of Language and Culture Studies has suspended the intake for 2023 altogether. According to the Prime Minister, the government is also looking at reducing the intake of arts students in classes 11 and 12. Out of 6,543 arts students, 5,805 students passed the board exam last year. With camera person Chimirinzen, Kiledem, PBS News. The National Referral Hospital in the capital has carried out the first cochlear implant surgeries in the country. A cochlear implant is a small, complex electronic device that helps improve hearing for people with severe hearing loss. Three patients from about 20 adult applicants were selected to undergo the surgery. The surgeries were carried out during the week. A team comprising two German doctors along with a Bhutanese doctor and other medical staff conducted the cochlear implant surgeries. The team took about three hours to complete each of the two surgeries. I'm lucky to be among the three people selected for the cochlear implant. I feel like I have been given a second chance to lead a meaningful and productive life. I am thankful to the hospital and the doctors making this possible. I have had a hearing problem since I was small. I couldn't hear when I was in class 12 when it was time to write our exams. It has been about two years since then. According to the head of the ENT and head neck surgery department, cochlear implant surgeries are carried out for people who are born deaf as well as for those who lose their hearing over time. However, he said, depending on the patient's case, the surgeries have to be carried out before a certain period of time to ensure its success. Again, the duration uh, is very important. So supposing if they have been deaf for a couple of years, you know, 10, 20 years of age, and then if you're implanting after 20 years of deafness, then again, the result won't be encouraging. So the earlier, the better. Even if somebody goes deaf, cannot completely hear, and if uh, better not to prolong surgery, then we have to, I mean, operate at the earliest. So then that gives the possibility of uh, the best hearing uh, possibility. He added for those born with hearing impairment, the ideal period for the surgery is within a year after birth. Meanwhile, the three patients will undergo rehabilitation programs for at least three months during which they will be given speech therapy. After we do the cochlear implant surgery, 
the most next important thing is to rehabilitate the patient because uh, the person cannot hear the next day after we have done a surgical implantation. Uh, it takes time. So normally uh, after two to three weeks of surgery, we switch on the machine. And then there is the entire process of rehabilitation where the cost of one device is estimated to be around 800,000 newton in the market. The three implants for the surgery, costing 2.5 million newton, were donated by an Austrian company called the Medill Implant Company. The next batch of surgery is expected to be carried out in September. For Karma Wangdi, Sunam Pem for BBS News. People can now expect to get affordable public houses in Thimpu and across the country. The government housing colonies have been limited to civil servants so far, but the National Housing Development Corporation will make public affordable houses available to everyone from April. Meanwhile, for the first time in over a decade, the NHDCL has also revised rents for its houses. People in need of affordable houses are those who have a lower household income. While there are affordable government-constructed houses across the country, it was not available to people outside the civil service. The NHDCL's new reform would allow housing allotments to even private employees. This allotment will be based on the gross income of a household. It will be income-based allotment now. Of course, there are other criteria as well, but this would be the main criteria. So uh, we have drawn up, uh, come up with about four different income bands, starting from 10,000, it will go all the way till 30,000. Mm -hmm. So each income band will be eligible uh, for certain type of category of housing units. Tenants will be allowed to occupy public affordable houses for a maximum period of 10 years. Currently, the NHDCL is working on an online application system which is expected to be open to the public in April. Meanwhile, the new rental revision is aimed at the sustainability of public houses. So far, the rents were charged at a rate fixed by the Finance Ministry, which was based on actual floor area and not the cost of construction. For example, you make an investment to build a property. And normally the rent setting is done based on how much you have invested. So these things are not ever taken into consideration. Because of this low revenue, NSCL has been struggling to maintain the properties because most of the properties that were transferred to us were in a very bad shape and even now also some of the properties are as old as 50 years old and you really need to invest a lot of money to make it in a livable conditions. The reforms in the eligibility criteria for affordable public houses have delighted the people and they are looking forward to moving into government housing. I get 11,000 as salary but have to pay 6,500 as house rent. And with the leftover money, it is hard to sustain. So if the government allows private employees to avail public affordable housing units, then we will be able to help our family and spend some for ourselves. I am very happy that from now on even private and corporate employees can live in public houses. It is going to benefit people like us with low income. Some private employees hold bigger posts but with low income, so it will benefit us all. If everyone can get the opportunity to live in a housing colony, then it is going to benefit people like us, especially with low income. Then we can also do some savings. House rents and the prices of goods are high in Thimpu compared to other districts. Apart from Wandipoda, Bumtang and Ha, the NHDCL has over 600 buildings across the country. The corporation plans to build more than 100 buildings with over 1,000 housing units in Thimpu, Pinsoling, Samchi, Tashiangchi and Nganglam. Kim Zong Hadin, BBS News. The judiciary of Bhutan has been delinked from the Royal Civil Service Commission as required by the Civil Service Reform Act of Bhutan 2022 from 15 February. According to a press release from the Civil Service Commission, only a few of the 400 civil servants working with the judiciary opted to return to the civil service and the rest stayed with the judiciary. 
More than 12,000 business entities have opened current deposit or CD accounts with the four commercial banks within the last five months. In August last year, the Department of Revenue and Customs notified small, medium and large businesses, including CSOs, to open CD accounts to ensure businesses declare their income and pay taxes without leakages. The department also notified that failure to do so will be fined of up to 5,000 newtom. The Bank of Bhutan has registered the highest number of new CD accounts so far. After the notification, the BOB registered 10,000 CD accounts as of December last year. Prior to the notification, the bank had 25,000 CD accounts. Similarly, T-Bank registered over 1,500 new CD accounts as of last month. The bank had nearly 10,000 registered CD accounts before the notification. Likewise, the Bhutan Development Bank has registered about 300 new CD accounts. Over 4,200 CD accounts were registered with the bank before the mid of August last year. Druk PNB Bank registered over 500 new CD accounts to date. More than 4,300 CD accounts were active with the bank before the department's notification. Meanwhile, the Bhutan National Bank or BNB refused to share its data with the BBS but said they were on track to achieve its target. The four banks in the country, excluding BNB, have registered over 55,000 CD accounts so far. In the meantime, no business entities have been imposed fines for failing to comply with the new rules. However, the DRC plans to resume inspection and monitoring of business entities which have been currently halted due to the tax filing season. There are about 62,000 business entities across the country. They paid more than 10,000 million netum as tax to the Department of Revenue and Customs in 2021. Devika Pradhan, BBS News. According to the revised rules on election conduct, candidates or political parties shall not make unrealistic pledges or manifestos. And to ensure this, an independent evaluation committee will be formed for the first time. According to the Election Commission of Bhutan, the committee shall comprise members from various relevant agencies and would, will advise and assist the Commission in evaluating the manifestos and campaign pledges of political parties and candidates. All political parties and aspiring candidates will be thoroughly scrutinized and evaluated by an Independent Evaluation Committee, or IEC. This, the Commission says, is in accordance with the rules on elections conduct in the Kingdom of Bhutan, which they announced in September last year. The Commission says they have already finished some groundwork, such as identifying the agencies from which the members will be chosen from. We haven't identified the person as such, but we have identified the relevant agencies. From there, we will be inviting the experts and vetting the vetting the uh, manifestos of the political parties and the candidates and see whether that is within the parameters of the country. He added that the practicality of manifestos and pledges will be assessed to avoid flooding of unrealistic pledges among the public. For example, foreign policy, foreign relationship, if it is outside, the, outside what is there within the Bhutan's foreign relationship, relationship framework, we will ask the party or the candidate to redefine that. So which then, that way, whatever they have, uh, the pledges that they make will be more realistic. The Commission has yet to decide on the number of members for the committee. The ECB did not share other details such as when the committee would be formed and how long it would function, citing confidentiality. Meanwhile, Rules on elections conduct state that political parties and candidates shall not release or publicize their manifestos without obtaining prior written approval from the Commission. Devika Pradhan, BBS News. The Election Commission of Bhutan is recommending postal voters to return their ballots only after watching the candidates' public debate. In the past, the ECB says people thought their ballots needed to be returned immediately after they were delivered. However, the Commission says there is enough time to decide and return their postal ballots. The Commission usually gives around a month for postal voters to return their ballots. Supposing your public uh, debate is tonight. So tonight you listen, you watch TV and decide and tomorrow immediately 
uh, dispatch your postal ballot. Mm -hmm. Because the, even if you send your postal ballot as soon as you receive, so the counting will take place one day, uh, maybe on the poll day only, poll day only. So many people feel that your, peop your postal ballot may not reach to the counting center on time. With that expectation, people send it. So we assure you that there is enough time kept between the last public debate and the uh, counting of the postal ballots. Eight new species of mosquitoes have been discovered by the Vector Borne Disease Control Program. The new species were detected while carrying out surveillance and monitoring of mosquitoes for the Malaria Elimination Program. The program confirmed the new species through genetic analysis. After four years of research and surveillance, the Vector Borne Disease Control Program based in Gelifu has detected eight new species of mosquitoes in Bhutan. These, they say, are new species that have been added to the Mosquito Taxonomic Inventory, which records new species of mosquitoes around the world. So far, uh, we have uh, discovered around eight new species, mosquito species, uh, belonging to three genera. Uh, Anopheles, we discovered around four new species. Then Culex, we discovered around two new species. And Aedes, again, we discovered two new species that has not been described so far in the world. The chief entomologist said that the findings cannot indicate the dangers of the new species because their biting preferences and behaviors have to be monitored. Furthermore, the findings cannot say for now whether these new species are related to global warming. The Vector Borne Disease Control Program has recorded 132 species of mosquitoes in Bhutan so far. Tashiangdan, BBS News. 39 Bhutanese athletes will be competing in the 19th Asian Games in Hangzhou, China, later this year. In a press conference on Monday, the athletes shared how preparations are going on and their aspirations from the Games. The Asian Olympic Council's director of media and broadcast was also part of the press conference. The 19th Asian Games will be held from the 28th of September till the 8th of October. Bhutanese athletes will be competing in eight different disciplines of karate, archery, boxing, judo, swimming, athletics, and shooting. Lin Chu, a 29-year-old police officer, will be competing in the air rifle shooting category. She previously participated in the Tokyo Olympics, the 14th South Asian Games, and the Rio Olympics in Brazil. My second time is Shuni. It is my second time participating in the Asian Games. We couldn't do well in the previous games, but now our points are good. So I expect to reach top 8, which is the final round. Tandon is another athlete who took part in the Asian Games before. He also won two silver medals during the South Asian Games. Unlike the past, we selected our team beforehand. A tournament was held and the champions were selected. So the preparation went well. The participants are training five hours a day for the upcoming games and aspire to bring home medals this time. Sring Diki for BBS News. That is all for this week. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye.